Hi, my name's Jay Dwyer and this is my presentation on some research that I did for my dissertation addressing social inequality through equestrian sports. I viewed equestrian sports and activities through the lens of various protected characteristics including gender, race, disability, social class and I wanted to see whether the general public perceived equestrian sports as inaccessible due to its perception as being the reserve of the wealthy and elite. The results of the project demonstrated that the general public overall did view equestrian sports as elite and inaccessible. However, research conducted inside the industry demonstrated that the industry is very diverse and is offering some very important social enterprise projects. There is a programme that is run through the Riding School Network for young people who are not in education, employment or training. And after undergoing a course with horses, learning about their welfare, learning how to look after them and learning how to ride, a significant number of young people have re-engaged with education, in some instances gaining places on apprenticeships or gaining employment and giving them hope for the future. There are similar projects with military veterans with PTSD and general horse owners have reported a positive impact on their mental health through their daily interactions with their horses. The equestrian industry has demonstrated a symbiotic nature between the welfare of people and the welfare of horses. And particularly through the inner city riding school network, there is a positive impact on the environment in big city locations, often where poverty is prevalent, there is high incidences of crime and pe young people especially are disengaged. Through these projects, an, an introduction to the rural way of life, how to care for animals, these young people are re-engaging with society and it's offering them hope for the future. The research demonstrates a discrepancy between what's actually going on in the industry and how the public are perceiving it. In learning about social enterprise projects that are lifting young people and those with mental health issues out of poverty and re-engaging with life doesn't reflect on the current public perception of equestrian sports and activities. And this is creating limitations to people who may potentially be able to access these great services to improve their own lives and imp improve the lives of their children. Whilst this discrepancy may not be exclusive to the equestrian industry, this study enables the stronger focus on the issues of social class and social exclusion. Horses offer a lens into a world that offers a gateway to a new way of living, a transitional world where people can learn hope and engage with life in new ways. Some of the reasons for the discrepancies between what's happening in the industry and what the public perceive are to do with media narrative, so often how equestrian sports are reported during the Olympics, often using terms that are very elite, almost mocking in their nature. There are costs associated with horse keeping, although the Riding School Network can offer subsidies and there is government funding now going into the equestrian industry to give young people an opportunity to engage with equestrian sports, despite this social situation. There is still very strong associations with social class, with horses. They have always been held in high esteem by kings and those in positions of power, and they have been used for military endeavours. The project itself consisted of an exhibition I was able to ask 50 non-equine staff and students from an agricultural college to attend the exhibition and before they viewed the exhibition they filled out a questionnaire to gauge their perception of equestrian sports. 
Significant numbers of those that had never had interactions with horses believed that equestrian sports were inaccessible. But after seeing the exhibition, which consisted of photographs of social enterprise projects, quotes from individual horse owners and other imagery, the perceptions of equestrian sports significantly altered. This research has the potential to increase the profile of social enterprises and increase the numbers of people who may benefit. In particular, the horses that may benefit are ex-race horses, cobs and riding school horses. So the racing industry, often when horses can't compete because they can't race fast enough or their careers have ended, there is sometimes difficulty in knowing where to place those horses. But some of the projects involving particularly military veterans, ex-race horses have been used successfully in those projects, giving the race horses a new career, but also benefiting the military veterans. And as we've discussed, the young people who are neat, people in deprived city areas, people with mental and physical health issues can all benefit from equestrian sports and activities. But it is apparent that people are not always aware of this due to the current perceptions of equestrian sports. The combination of horses who may have been disenfranchised and people who may feel rejected from society, there is a powerful opportunity to restore hope, give purpose, create discipline and selfless care, restore connection and community, and give a reason for people to move away from a life of crime. This connection between horses and people is symbiotic. It is a great example of one welfare. Whilst the findings of this research clearly demonstrate the positive impacts of social enterprise projects on the welfare of both horses and people, there is also further possibility to improve the environment by restoring biodiversity in more urban locations and more big city locations, the introduction of more of these projects in the big cities. The equestrian industry already uses the byproducts of agriculture, such as straw, and makes use of products that would otherwise be unusable in our food chain. Although I'm currently studying for an MRes at the University of Nottingham's School of Veterinary Medicine and Science, this research was validated by Derby University, delivered at Derby College Equestrian Centre through the Agricultural Provision at Broomfield Hall, supervised by Melissa Rudd, who kindly gave permission for me to use it for the One Welfare Tournament. 